Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 6 a.m., more than a dozen people shot in downtown Austin overnight. What we know about the investigation so far. Plus, a man is dead after San Antonio police say he was shot in the chest behind a dumpster on the southeast side of town. Details on what witnesses on scene told police. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 76 degrees to start your weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, June 12th. We have a lot to talk about this morning. Obviously, that shooting in Austin. Biggest headline of the morning. Before we get there, we're going to check in with weather. That's right, Max. Uh, I, I know you were out of town. Do you have a mm -hmm. good vacation? Had a good vacation. Family? Mm -hmm. Saw family for the first time, and the whole time I was saying, ah, I just want to go back to San Antonio, go back to the sunshine. Well, was it cold there? It was rainy. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, we, you've got sunshine and you've got heat this weekend, Max. We're starting off in the 70s, 76 degrees at the airport, 72 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 74 in comfort. Clouds this morning have returned as well, but very quickly we're going to see the sunshine. And so this weekend is going to be very summery. We'll be looking at temperatures in the low 90s this afternoon, but a heat index close to 100 degrees. A very similar forecast tomorrow for your Sunday as we round out the weekend as well. Hey, if you want to head to some of the state parks around uh, the area, it is going to be a hot day. In fact, Enchanted Rock, about 92 for the high. At the Hill Country State Natural Area, 93. Guadalupe River Park, it's going to be 93 as well for the high temperature. But we are going to see some rain chances in the future, so coming up we'll have a look at that and we'll check in on the tropics as well. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Like we talked about earlier, we begin this morning with the shooting in Austin. 13 people shot in Austin in the area of 400 East 6th Street. Officers still searching for who pulled the trigger. We just heard from the police chief in Austin, and here's what we know so far. Initials, initial calls were called for shots fired, came in at around 1.24 a.m. The amount of victims grew as time went on, and at 1.28, officers started life-saving measures, including chest seals, CPR, and tourniquets. 13 people were transported to the hospital, six by police, four by EMS, and three by personal vehicles. At last check, none of those who were shot have died. Now, right now, Austin police have the area shut down. They are looking at surveillance cameras, halo cameras, and body cams. We also know gang units and the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force has been called out to help investigate as well. Now, our Alicia Brera is currently en route to Austin to find out the latest details. She's going to be joining us live from the scene throughout the morning. Well, back here at home in San Antonio, police searching for the suspect who shot and killed a man on the southeast side of town last night. San Antonio police tell us witnesses called 911 saying they heard gunshots just after 10 last night. This is the reserve at the Pecan Valley Apartments, 4,000 block of East South Cross. When SAPD arrived, they say they found a 22-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the chest. First responders tried CPR. He was later transported to Bamsey, and that is where he later died. Police on the scene telling us they do not have a description of the suspect right now. Still working to figure out what exactly happened and why. A man was hit by an SUV last night while crossing a street on the city's west side. San Antonio police say at 1145 p.m., a man in his 30s was crossing the 1600 block of Castroville Road when an SUV struck him. The driver did not stop and render aid. Witnesses told police the SUV that hit the man was a tan color with damages to the front. The man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Castroville Road was shut down for several hours for investigators to process the scene. Latest news this morning, apparent human remains discovered along a San Antonio trail on the northeast side. Investigators say someone made the discovery several feet off the Jack White Park trailhead. That's just off I-35 near a high water crossing. That's in the Salado Creek area, and it happened just before one yesterday. Now, the Bear County Medical Examiner now conducting an investigation on the remains, trying to figure out what exactly led to this person's death. Still unclear how long that body had been out there, but BCSO is working to see if they can identify who it is and how they got there. Police need your help this morning finding two men believed to be armed, dangerous, and on the run. Just look at your those pictures on your screen. Police say these two suspects are wanted in connection with armed robberies at pharmacies in Seguin. 38-year-old Andrew Dupree Jack and 37-year-old Alesco Factor are also accused of similar robberies in Sealy and Pleasanton. This is a story we've been following for months, and the cases involve victims being tied up with zip ties. Anyone with information on these suspects is asked to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. That number, 
T-I-P-S. Now to the latest on the pandemic, new fears this morning about the Delta variant first spotted in India. It has now been detected in 29 states and we're being told it is highly transmissible. The Pfizer vaccine is 88% against Delta after two doses, but just 33% after one dose. All this happening as a nation approaches another milestone. Nearly 600,000 Americans dying from COVID-19. ABC's Christine Sloan has the story. The highly transmissible Delta variant first spotted in India, tightening its grip on the UK, where the strain now makes up 90% of new cases. The concern here at home intensifying. The Delta variant now identified in at least 29 states, about 6% of cases, doubling from last week. Research showing the Pfizer vaccine is 88% effective against the variant after the second dose, but only 33% effective after one shot. Communities that are not well vaccinated, that haven't hit vaccination targets that we're looking for, are those that are going to be most at risk of the future. Some southern states with the lowest vaccination rates in the country. This vaccination site in Forest, Mississippi, nearly empty. At one time, we had cars lined up all the way around getting a shot. As the U.S. slowly approaches another staggering statistic, nearly 600,000 lives lost. Chicago and Washington, D.C., the latest major cities to fully reopen. Reopening day, 100% capacity. I mean, there's nothing like going to a game at Wrigley Field with everybody here. With the nation eyeing a return to normalcy, healthcare workers reflecting on the pandemic in video diaries. If I can inspire anybody to become a nurse, um, do it. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. The Pfizer vaccine and Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available today. A pop-up clinic will be open from 10 this morning to 1 p.m. It's happening at the Restore Adult Education Center on San Pedro Avenue. If you can't make it today, don't worry. There is one tomorrow as well. That one is happening at St. Rose of Lima at 9883 Marbach Road from 930 in the morning till 330 p.m. You can find all this information anytime on our website, ksat.com. And HEB also teaming up for a one day blitz to vaccinate as many eligible middle school students and their family members as possible. SAISD families and children ages 12 and up, they're eligible for free COVID vaccines during these pop up clinics. Now, vaccination clinics will be held at several neighborhood HEB stores near the school campuses going from 9 a.m. today to noon. HEB pharmacies also accepting walk ins daily. Weekday hours are from 9 a.m. to close and weekend hours vary by store. SAISD families interested in participating in these clinics, getting the vaccination this weekend or any upcoming clinics, you can register right now. Just head to SAISD.net slash vaccines. Time now, 6.08, 76 degrees out. A Volkswagen Super Beetle getting a major upgrade still ahead. How one shop was able to make it fully electric and what it's not capable of. Hmm. Plus, National Park seeing a rise in visitors this year. After the break, we explain why. Should be a good day to get out and enjoy San Antonio. Sarah Spivey says to expect lots of sunshine. She'll have our weekend forecast when we come back. Welcome back. America's national parks are enjoying record setting attendance after more than a year of travel restrictions due to the pandemic. So last month, Yellowstone National Park saw the most visitors is ever recorded for a month in May. More than 658,000 visits. That's an increase of 11% over the previous record, not just the previous year, the previous record for May in 2016. We have another major national park in Wyoming also setting a May record with 363,000 visitors last month. Typically, the biggest crowds over the year pack in the park in July and August, so we could see more and more records. Well, Volkswagen Super Beetle is 50 years old and now it's fully electric. A repair shop south of Portland, Maine converted it for a person who's owned it since the 70s. Neal's Motor Service says the tricky part was figuring out how to do it. Mechanic, mechanics yeah. installed 35 oh. batteries over a period of several months. Now it can drive 80 miles on one charge and accelerate 40 miles an hour faster than it used to. Mm, inside, it kind of looks like Fast and Furious hitting the NAS button. <laughs> All right, it is National Red Rose Day. In case you didn't know, red roses became synonymous with love and romance a long time ago when early cultures used them to decorate weddings. But the flower also used for perfumes and herbal teas. Now, roses grow easily in many climates, and they're in bloom right now. 
So you can just look out for the wild rose, make your own plants. Do you guys grow roses? I know you grow a lot. I have roses. Okay. They're not they're not red, they're pink roses. Mm. And they're much smaller, but there are still a lot of roses blooming around the city. It's like those late blooms from that winter freeze are still happening, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, they're enjoying the water and the rain that we saw pretty much for most of last month and even at the start of this month. But we really don't have a significant chance for rain over the next seven days. However, there are some subtle changes that will give us a couple of shots at rain. Uh, right now outside, cloudy skies to start our day. It's 75 degrees out there and winds are from the south at about five miles per hour. But humidity is high and so get used to another uh, weekend here where It'll be toasty uh, every afternoon. 74 in Bulverde, 76 in Holotus. It's 74 every in Medina, 77 in Canyon Lake, and 73 in Comfort. As I mentioned, the humidity is very high right now. But this afternoon, we'll see the humidity mix down a little bit, and dew points will be able to go from the 70s into the 60s. So although it's going to be a muggy day, uh, we really won't be expecting oppressive humidity in the afternoon. So that's some good news there. But starting off the day, we are looking at some areas of fog. Visibility is down to four miles in Castroville and down to nine at Stinson. Just some early morning fog that is going to lift here very quickly. We'll see skies clear as early as 10 o'clock this morning, and it'll be mostly sunny in the afternoon. But look at these high temperatures, 100 degrees in Del Rio, 100 in Eagle Pass, 102 in Laredo, 92 in Kerrville for the high, 92 in Austin, 94 in New Brunfels, and here in San Antonio, we'll reach 93 degrees. Until then, though, it'll be 80 at 10, 84 at noon. Mostly sunny skies are really going to allow us to quickly see temperatures rise, and that's why in the afternoon we'll be at 93 for the high temperature. South-southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, even though it isn't going to be oppressively humid in the afternoon, we're still going to have enough humidity that'll make it feel like it's closer to 100 degrees in this afternoon. So just keep uh, in mind if you have outdoor plans, you might might want to make sure to stay hydrated. All right, we do have a complex of storms that's in uh, North Texas moving into the DFW metro area uh, right now, a and we'll be watching that carefully to see how far south that outflow boundary could go, but it could allow for areas like Waco uh, to see some storms, uh, but it is going to be a nice day across the Texas coast if you want to enjoy some time along our beaches to the south. Now, high pressure system in the upper levels of the atmosphere, that's what's keeping out our rain and allowing for our heat to soar. Notice though that on the east side of this upper level high, that's where that complex of storms has developed. Now over the next few days, that high pressure system is going to move west and we're going to be on the east side of that high pressure system. And that's why we have a chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm uh, starting tomorrow night and lasting through the week ahead because we could get a complex or two up in North Texas and we'll have to track those to see if they can make it all the way down to San Antonio, but it is an off chance, a chance of uh, again about 20% uh, starting tomorrow night and lasting through most of the work week. Next, we're also going to keep focus on the tropics in the Bay of Campeche. We do have a small disturbance that has a chance, about 30%, to develop into a tropical system over the next five days. After that, we really don't know where it would end up in the Gulf, and so we're just going to have to keep an eye on that system if it does develop into anything. But we'll keep you posted. Looking ahead, though, throughout the rest of uh, the weekend and into the week, it's, it's going to be hot every day. High temperatures in the low to mid 90s, heat index values close to 100 degrees. Uh, but again, we do introduce that chance for an isolated shower or storm starting tomorrow night and lasting through the week ahead. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 617, 76 degrees out. Well, being inclusive at the beach, still ahead, a look at this new tool one group of engineering students put together to help people with disabilities be able to surf. Mm. And it is Saturday, so we're going to check in with David Elder. He is taking us to Bernie today. We're going to have a preview of Texas Eats right after the break. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick 3871, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 5857, Fireball 8. And Cash 5, 6, 7, 13, 23, 35. Mega Millions, 4, 43, 56, 63, 68. Big number 13, Mega Pyre 4. Good luck. We'll be right back.
Well, today on Texas Eats, starting at 10 a.m., David Elder travels around Bernie. But he is also joined by wrestling superstar Goldberg, checking out some of the favorite spots. Take a look. This has to be some of the best food you can get in the area. And we're actually looking, get this guys, smoked tomahawk steaks. Cooked at a beautiful medium rare finish, but this is like the showstopper. The only thing bigger and better than this burger is the gold burger that he makes special. Just like it's named after you. It's named after you. There you me. go. I gotta take a bite of this thing. Let's do it together. Cheers to you. Big old piece of bacon, lettuce, onions, tomatoes, going in for the real thing. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Who's got more <laughs> on the goatee? Me? <laughs> For sure. You can see the smoke ring on the outside of the burger. It has like that char grill vibe going to it. Big old slab. I mean, that's a slab of bacon. That's a solid burger. Look at you, you go. You went for round two already. I'm looking for a napkin. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I was hiding. Uh, <laughs> get all this off my face. Good old Goldberg. I just, I have no words. A little jealous. Living the dream. <laughs> 622, 76 degrees out. Well, just ahead, a wheelchair made to help people with disabilities enjoy the beach just like everyone else. We're showing you this unique project a group of California engineering students made. In California, some college engineering students and a nonprofit group are developing a robot to help people with disabilities go surfing on their own. So Amp Surf and the Cal Poly Engineering Program coming together to make this possible a self-propelling all-terrain wheelchair. Take a look. It allows people with disabilities to get in the water, surf, and then get out of the water all while being completely independent. So this is how it started for Cal Poly engineering students, including industrial engineering senior Lauren Knott. They've been working on the self-driving wheelchair for the past nine months, all part of their senior project. It's really making a difference for people and uh, people with disabilities are able to go surfing and kind of experience surfing as a form of therapy and as a form of fun. And so we felt like doing a project like this was really gonna make a difference. Really amazing work they're doing. The all-terrain wheelchair is able to get down to the water, allow surfers to unload their board, and with a smartphone, they can do the rest. Not completely finished yet, but the road doesn't stop here. Lauren says they're gonna continue to work on it over the next year, and their team is excited to see where it goes. That's awesome. Yeah, helping out the community. I love it. All right, just about 627, 76 degrees now. Well, it's the second fastest growing crime in the world. We're talking about human trafficking just ahead. The biggest misconception about it and who traffickers usually target. All right, San Antonio police releasing more and more body camera footage, but critics are saying it is still not enough transparency. We'll break it down next. Good morning and welcome back. 6.30 this Saturday, June 12th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yeah, we have a lot of big news to get to, especially a shooting out of Austin. But first, let's check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, sunny weekend. Yeah, sunny weekend for us, although it doesn't look like it outside right now. We are seeing some clouds early this morning, but those clouds are going to give way to sunshine fairly quickly. It is 75 degrees at the airport and humidity is high at 90%. 75 in New Braunfels, 75 in Hondo and 73 in New Valley. It's 79 degrees in Del Rio. It's going to be a great weekend to perhaps maybe enjoy some time by the pool or at some of our uh, local coastlines down in Corpus Christi, Port Aransas. The weather's going to be great for summertime activities. In fact, find a way to stay cool today because look at that high temperature 93 for the high, mostly sunny skies. It'll feel closer to 100 though because of that high humidity. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a check of the tropics and talk about rain chances in the week ahead. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. As we alluded to earlier, breaking news out of Austin 6th Street in particular, 13 people shot. Police still working, still searching for the person responsible. Now, this is what we know so far. Numerous calls for the shooting started to come in just before 1.30 this morning out of Austin's Entertainment District, and it caused authorities to swarm the area. The shooting happened in the 400 block of East 6th Street, just a few blocks away from I-35. Our Alicia Beretta is live in Austin with more information. Alicia. What's the current situation like? 
Well, right now, things are once again under control. We're actually kind of surprised to see that vehicles are already able to make their way through. We're on Street, 6th Street, about two, three blocks from where it actually happened. You can still kind of see some of those barricades activity going on there, but really much calm than what we expected. But this is how fast things unfolded, according to police. It was about at 1.24 a.m. when that first call for a shooting and three victims injured came in. Within seconds, 911, fire, and EMS started getting many more calls. Just two minutes later, police received a vague suspect description, but that is what Austin PD is going off of. They're looking for a man with a black shirt, skinny build, and dreadlocks. By that time, again around 1.30, officers were already on the scene coordinating efforts to help the multiple victims on the ground. But according to Chief Chacon, the barricades in place to help make the area safer for visitors on 6th Street and the amount of people out here is exactly what proved to be a challenge for them. Very large crowds. It was very difficult to contain the scene. It was very difficult for EMS to make their way into uh, this crowd. And because of the nature of the injuries, officers had to go ahead and use their police vehicles to put some of these shooting victims into the vehicles and transport them themselves to the hospital so that they could get the, the urgent care that they needed. As of this hour, no fatalities have been reported. Austin police says there are a total of 13 victims, two of them in critical condition. But the big question this morning is how? Why did this happen? Authorities still haven't determined a motive. They are looking into whether this was gang-related, a domestic terrorist situation. But interim police chief of Austin, Joseph Chacon, says that evidence points to the shooting to be more than likely an isolated incident. And there are several investigations being carried out within different departments. We know that the Austin PD aggravated assault homicide unit detectives are out here but also FBI they're carrying out their own investigation and Chief Chacon did say that this is a pretty big scene it was expected for the area to be shut down for hours but again as you can see with this traffic it's open once again we'll be sticking around here all morning long during GMSA to bring you the latest information from police reporting live from Austin Alicia Barrera KSAT 12 News Thank you, Alicia. Well, we'll begin this half hour with new sections of the U.S.-Mexico border being federally funded. Governor Greg Abbott has said he wants the state of Texas to build its own wall in response to the record of influx of migrants at the border. Support for it was in Del Rio, but is still unknown if t a Texas wall would pick up where former President Trump's wall ended. President Biden halted construction soon after he took office. Where it would go, how much it would cost, or how it would be paid for could be what Governor Abbott will announce next. However, what puzzles at least one lawmaker is why the governor didn't bring it up when, this, when the legislature was still in session. So if this was something that was of top of mind for Governor Abbott, I would have hoped that we would have had a chance to discuss it when the legislature's in town so that we can obviously weigh in. Governor Abbott's big reveal of what exactly he has planned is expected next week. Meanwhile, last month's historic walkout by Texas Democrats derailing a voting bill will be front and center at the White House next week. State Representative Trey Martinez Fisher of San Antonio will be among those who are meeting with Vice President Kamala Harris. The eyes of the nation have been on Texas for quite some time, uh, and I think I'm honored to stand with Vice President Harris and the Biden administration uh, to go to Washington and, and, and say my piece and do what I can to help leverage a national response when it comes to voting rights in America. So Texas Republicans say the voting bill is to improve voter integrity, but Texas Democrats say that it is suppression. Now, the representative says having a national voting rights bill would help stop a lot of states from joining Texas, Florida, Georgia, and now Arizona from passing similar legislation. A day after San Antonio police released footage from two deadly shootings, questions remain about the significant editing done to both of those videos. SAPD officials published footage on YouTube this week from an April 15th shooting outside San the San Antonio International Airport terminal. A day later, they posted the deadly shooting of two people during a traffic stop at Pin Road. They are the first videos provided since the department introduced a body camera video release policy in December. 
but they both included edited edits and narration over the footage. One police accountability expert says context is important in cases like this, but that the public should be given access to unedited footage as well. Let videos speak for themselves, um, because what will happen is it could cause people to be more suspicious if there's narration over. Yesterday, SAPD officials refused to make Chief William McManus available for an interview. A second version of the pin road footage without narration was shared with media from a private YouTube link, which department officials asked not to be shared publicly since it lacked context. Well, guilty. That was yesterday's verdict for a man on trial for stalking his estranged wife's boss back in 2019. It took the jury only about four hours to convict Bobby Martinez. While stalking is only a third degree felony, Martinez now facing a sentence of 25 years to life in jail. The stiffer punishment is due to Martinez's previous criminal record and being in jail twice before this latest charge. His sentencing is scheduled for August 19th. Now the latest when it comes to those catalytic converter thefts and the bill meant to crack down on the problem. Thieves target the car parts for the precious metals inside and sell the stolen parts to recycling facilities. The Recycling Council of Texas, which represents metal recycling companies in the state, says the passage of House Bill 4110 will do little to slow down the problem. The president of the council says the bill doesn't stop criminals from trying to ship the parts out of state for sale. He also says criminals could also sell the parts online. The council suggested restricting sales to metal recycling facilities or placing the same re restrictions across all facilities that handle the car parts. Those suggestions did not make it into the into the measure. We didn't want to speak against the bill because, um, you know, we didn't want to we didn't we wanted to try to solve the problem and help with the problem. And but unfortunately, the way the bill um, got passed, I don't think it's um, it's um, going to help with much. Governor Greg Abbott has over a week to sign the bill or veto it if the bill comes be becomes law, recycling companies will have to document in detail where the catalytic converter came from, including the vehicle title. Those selling would only be able to get $25 cash. Now to your morning headlines, two House Democrats disclosing this week that their smartphone data was secretly obtained by former President Donald Trump's Justice Department. It was all part of an effort to uncover the source of multiple leaks related to the investigation of the Russian-related election interference. The, the problem plagued energy company that powers Puerto Rico's grid said it now expects all customers to have their power restored. This after a fire at a substation Thursday left hundreds of thousands without electricity. Luma Energy reported that 2,200, 22,000 customers were without electricity service, a significant improvement compared to Thursday when some 700,000 were left in the dark. The incident impacted about 900,000 customers altogether. Time now just about 640, 76 degrees out. Do you own a Volkswagen or an Audi? The company says millions of its customers were impacted, <clears throat> excuse me, by a data breach. What information was stolen and what you can do if you think your personal information has been targeted. And it is a $150 billion industry worldwide, but it doesn't just happen overseas or across the border. Human trafficking, well, it is a big problem right here in our own backyard. We're going to explain. 76 degrees outside at 640 this morning. Looks like there's some clouds lingering right now, but Sarah Spivey says we should have sunshine this weekend. She'll have her full forecast when we come back. Well, human trafficking is the second fastest growing crime in the world, second only to the drug trade, and the stats are terrifying. That's right. Thousands of sexual assaults and a lot of money changing hands, making it very valuable and, well, a chance for these victims to escape almost impossible. And it's not just happening in big cities, but in almost every community in our country. And experts fear COVID is going to cause a human trafficking crisis. David Sears has the details. I was going through a very uh, serious divorce from a very wealthy husband. He actually had me sold into human trafficking so that I wouldn't win custody of my five children. Kimberly Lansford was 27 when human traffickers drugged her and took her from her Denver home to Mexico City. 
You're broken in with terror. A lot of physical abuse, a lot of sexual abuse. Kimberly's nightmare continued for 19 years until... Samaritan Village found me. For more than a decade, Samaritan Village has been helping women rebuild their lives. For those young women that feel ugly, unwanted, unseen, those traffickers can come in and they fill that hole. Samaritan Village offers hope, supplying free housing for 18 months. Survivors receive mental, physical, and dental care, access to job training, and most importantly, support. Money from donors and from the thrift store helps pay for the costs, but now organizations like this one fear fallout from the pandemic. Now we're kind of calling this the quiet before the storm. I know that when we all resume to a state of normalcy, there's going to be a lot of people that need help. Women who could not get help during the lockdown. It doesn't just happen to the lower class or the drug addict. The biggest misconception about human trafficking is that the victims are runaways or addicts. Family members selling family members is common. Also, keep in mind, traffickers often target high school girls and threaten to ruin their reputation. And remember, you can always call the human trafficking hotline. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Well, back here at home, 646, 76 degrees. I was just in Philly for the last few days. It was rainy, and I kept looking at the San Antonio weather. I kept getting the weather, uh, weather authority notifications. It's like... Should have stayed in San Antonio. Yeah, this week, Sarah, it's actually been nice. We haven't had a lot of, have we had any rain this week? I, maybe just a couple. We haven't. In fact, yeah. the last time we got measurable rain was this time last week at the airport. Uh, but we are not going to see any rainfall this weekend. Uh, so if you are looking forward to enjoying some summertime activities, maybe outdoors, it's going to be a great weekend to do that. Hit up one of our local rivers, one of our local lakes, perhaps take a trip down to the coast. You should be in good shape either way. 76 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour and it's humid. No surprise there. Dew points are in the low to mid 70s. 70 degrees in Rock Springs, 79 in Del Rio. Already at 79 in Del Rio, you know it's going to be a toasty day when they start off close to 80. Close to 80 in Gonzales, 75 in New Braunfels, 75 in Austin. And as I mentioned, those dew points are in the low to mid 70s. Dew points at that range are oppressively humid. However, as we get throughout the rest of the day. These dew points are going to mix down a little bit and we'll be looking at dew points in the 60s in the afternoon, which is still muggy and will still give us a heat index value, but it's better than afternoon dew points in the low to mid 70s for sure. Now in the future castle though, we've got some clouds out there this morning after 10. Those are going to quickly clear and we'll have mostly sunny skies this afternoon and it's going to be a hot one. Temperatures will climb to near 100 degrees out toward Del Rio, but here in San Antonio, we'll be seeing a steady rise into the low 90s in in the afternoon 90 uh, at 2 and 93 for the afternoon high around 5 p.m. South winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set around 834 and will cool back down into the 70s by midnight tonight. But as I mentioned, there is going to be enough humidity to make it feel like 100 degrees in San Antonio, feeling like 100 in New Braunfels, feeling like 104 out toward Del Rio and Catula, feeling like 104 in Beeville, 103 in Victoria. Now in our weather pattern, Notice that there's a complex of storms that's moving through the Dallas Fort Worth area. This is likely going to hold on and make it to East Texas. Uh, now, this is on the east side of our heat high, which is currently over uh, northern Mexico. And over the next several days, this heat high is going to move further to the north and to the east. And then here in San Antonio, we're going to be on the east side of that. So we'll have to watch out for complexes like the one uh, that has developed uh, near the Dallas Fort Worth area. But our chance for rain is pretty small still in the week ahead. Only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm through a Monday through Thursday. And then uh, toward the end of this upcoming week, we're going to be really looking at the tropics. There is a, an area of low pressure that's unorganized in the Bay of Campeche that is capable of producing something in the Gulf of Mexico over the next five days. Only about a 30% chance, but still the chance is there. Beyond that, we'll continue to look at the tropics. And by the way, we do have a whole app that's dedicated to the tropics. It's called our Hurricane Tracker app, and you can actually download it for free. Uh, and it will be with you all hurricane season, which lasts all the way through the end of November. Now, looking at the seven day forecast, as I mentioned, it's going to be toasty see tomorrow uh, temperatures will even be a couple of degrees warmer than today. Heat index close to 100 degrees, then a small chance for rain in the week ahead, but temperatures will stay warm with highs in the low 90s. It could be a lot worse. Could be. We could be at 100 <laughs> degrees. Yeah.
just going to feel that way. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> just going to feel <laughs> that way. you got to drink a lot of water, stay hydrated right. out there. Be safe. Just about 650, 76 degrees out. Well, have you ever wondered if your personal data has gotten into the wrong hands? Ooh. Well, you can check with just a few clicks after the break how to find out if you've been a victim of data breaching. Good morning and welcome back. Automaker Volkswagen, the latest big company hit by a data breach more than 3 million customers, having their data stolen after a third party vendor, well, Volkswagen uses, it was hacked. The breach includes sensitive information like vehicle ID numbers, driver's license numbers, and even social security numbers. Volkswagen says the majority of customers affected were its luxury brand Audi. That's right. So from the big gas pipeline hack to small businesses, it seems like there's a lot of data breaches these days, almost daily. So if you think your personal data has been hacked, what should you do? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has what you should do now. When Nicholas de Leon got an alert saying he'd signed up for a bunch of credit cards, he was puzzled. I didn't know what was happening because I didn't sign up for any new credit cards. He hadn't been notified about a data breach, so he checked online to see where his personal information was compromised. It was scary, it was stressful, and the worst part was that I was on the hook to clean up the mess. Sometimes companies do inform you if you're the victim of a data breach, but you can also dig for yourself to find out what info was compromised. The website, Have I Been Pwned, will tell you if it's your email, phone number, or password. If your password was compromised, change it everywhere you've used it. It's best not to reuse passwords. To help you remember them all, use a password manager like 1Password. It creates and stores complex, unique passwords for each of your accounts. Cyber criminals use your personal info to try to log into your accounts. So use multi-factor authentication, which requires a second form of ID to log in. Often it's a code sent to your phone, but we recommend using a form that's more secure than that like the Google Authenticator app or a hardware security key such as YubiKey. If your social security number or financial information was part of a data breach, Consumer Reports suggests freezing your credit. You can do that by going to each of the three major credit bureaus. Keep in mind you will have to thaw your credit report if you apply for any type of loan. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 6.55, 76 degrees out. After the break, Alicia Beretta live from Austin one more time with the latest on that shooting. Good morning, I'm Alicia Barrera. We're live in Austin, Texas after more than 10 people were shot on 6th Street overnight. Here's what we know so far, according to interim police chief Joseph Chacon of Austin PD. Reports for shooting started to come in minutes before 1.30 a.m. Austin police, fire and EMS reported to the 400 block of East Commerce Street, only about four blocks away from I-35. According to police chief Joseph Chacon, it was very difficult for authorities to make their way to the scene and contain the area because of the large crowds and, of course, the nature of the incident. At last count, 13 people are injured, two remain in the hospital in critical condition, but as of 4 a.m.'s news conference, no fatalities have been reported. Austin police say that as of now, they haven't determined a motive, but they do say that they're looking for a suspect who is seen wearing a black t-shirt, more of a skinny build with dreadlocks. Reporting live in Austin, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It's 76 degrees outside and fairly cloudy, but even by 10, our skies will be clearing and it'll be a mostly sunny and toasty day. 84 at noon, 93 for the high temperature today. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Similar forecast tomorrow with heat index values near 100 degrees and then a small chance for rain each day in the forecast ahead. But we really don't have any big rainmakers in the next seven days, so it's just going to be one of those forecasts where you'll want to tune in every day. All right, so Spivey, thank you so much. We clearly have a lot to talk to you about today, but we are going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We're going to check in with Alicia Barrera. We'll be back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police investigating the cause of a shooting that happened overnight on the city's east side. We have the latest from investigators and the latest on the number of people shot and injured. We're going to be live from Austin, Texas today, right off of Sith Street after reports of an active shooter overnight. More than 10 people are in the hospital. We'll have the details just ahead here on GMSA.
Taking a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees. Sarah Spivey says it will be a sunny weekend. She'll have our forecast in just a bit. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, June 12th, and a lot to get to this morning. And we'll talk to Sarah Spivey in just a second. But first, we continue to follow breaking news out of Austin, where at least 13 people have been shot early this morning on East 6th Street. That's right, Alicia Rivera joining us live in Austin with the latest. Alicia, what do we know so far? Hey, good morning. Well, still a lot of shock with people who are walking, even driving through. One, that it's open, and obviously, two, because of what happened. So we have moved closer since we last uh, spoke to our audience here. We're on 6th Street. We're probably about a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile away from I-35. So Netches Street is the one that we're closest to. So what you're seeing here, this is exactly where that shooting happened, between uh, just in the middle of the street. Again, 6th Street, if you know this area, it's always blocked off, very um, so that did make it difficult for authorities to get in here, but it's obviously made it easier for them to process the street. And now it's clear. You see these cars going through. So we did speak to some witnesses here. They're actually here on the scene right now because they had some trouble starting their bikes this morning. There's a biker rally going on. They tell me that they did hear some shots and all they remember seeing is some women being carried out by EMS. And they just remember that everything was so chaotic. But let's take a look at what it looked like earlier today. The first call came in at 1.24 a.m. with a report of three victims injured. Within seconds, 911 fire and EMS started getting so many more calls. Two minutes later, that's when police actually received a description of a suspect. According to Austin PD, they're looking for a man, skinny build with a black shirt and dreadlocks. By that time, officers were already on the scene coordinating efforts, but according to Chief Chacon, interim Chief Chacon, the barricades in place to help make the area safer for visitors on 6th Street actually made it a little harder for them to get in here and help quickly. Very large crowds. It was very difficult to contain the scene. It was very difficult for EMS to make their way into uh, this crowd. And because of the nature of the injuries, officers had to go ahead and use their police vehicles to put some of these shooting victims into the vehicles and transport them themselves to the hospital so that they could get the, the urgent care that they needed. So it was expected for this for this area, according to Austin PD, to be closed down for several hours. Again, it's pretty shocking to see that it's open now that pedestrians are able to to get closer, that we're able to get closer to give you a better look. But the big question remains, who is the shooter and exactly what was the motive? Austin PD, as well as federal authorities, are investigating to figure out and have those answers. But as of now, another thing to update you on, no fatalities, according to Austin PD. We'll stick around here with more information. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Yeah, thank you very much, Alicia. The weather, changing now to the weather, we're going to have a very summery weekend with temperatures steadily rising into the low to mid 90s in the afternoon. So feeling a lot like summer. Even these clouds that we've seen this morning are starting to clear out and we're seeing plenty of sunshine out there right now. It is 77 degrees at the airport, 75 down at Port SA, 77 at JBSA Randolph, 80 in Stinson, 72 in Comfort, 73 in Kerrville and 73 in Bandera. Today is going to be a really wonderful day to enjoy some outdoor activities near a body of water, whether that be one of our local lakes or a local pool. 93 degrees for the high temperature, but feeling a lot more like 100 in the afternoon. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hey, if you'd like to head to the coast this weekend, it's going to be pretty nice in the Port Aransas and Corpus Christi area. Today, just a slight chop to the water, 85 for the high. Tomorrow, those waters will be smooth uh, with variable winds and the water temperature currently sitting at about 83 degrees. So definitely warm enough to enjoy some time out there. Uh, now coming up in the forecast, speaking of the tropics, we're going to talk about uh, sudden potential development in the tropics over the next several days. I'll have a look ahead to your work week as well. Coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, three people in the hospital after being shot on the city's east side. Investigators trying to figure out why this all happened. So police on the scene telling us this happened just before two this morning. This is North New Braunfels and Hayes Street. It's near a local bar. Two women taken to Bamsey in critical condition. One man ended up driving himself to University Hospital. 
He is expected to be OK. Officers tell us they found at least 14 shell casings on the street in the area. Detectives currently looking at the video from the local bar, trying to piece together what exactly happened and who is responsible. This morning, police are searching for the suspect who shot and killed a man on the southeast side of town last night. Police say witnesses called 911 saying they heard gunshots just after 10 last night at the reserve at Pecan Valley Apartments in the 4000 block of East South Cross. When SAPD arrived, they say they found a 22 year old man with a gunshot wound to his chest. First responders performed CPR on the man who was then transported to Bamsey, where he later died. Police on scene did not have a description of the suspect. The investigation is still ongoing. Well, this morning, police investigating after human remains were found near Jack White Park Trailhead just off I-35 on the northeast side. Police say someone found the remains just before one yesterday near a high water crossing area on Salado Creek. Bear County Medical Examiner working to figure out who this person is and how the remains got there. Police say still unclear how long they've been there clearly. This is an active situation, an active investigation, so we'll keep you updated online and on air as more information becomes available. Arson investigators are working to figure out how a fire started and destroyed a home on the city's west side. This was a scene just before 10 last night near South Chupadetas and Del Valley Alley. Firefighters on scene tell us there are no injuries reported, but the house is a total loss. Damage is estimated at about $60,000. When fire crews arrived, the home was filled with flames and even spread to a nearby home. The family who lives next door is safe and can return to their house. Now this morning, we have an update to the shooting that happened outside of Joint Base San Antonio Lackland earlier this week. Now, police say the investigation is closed. As of this morning, still unclear if gunshots were even actually fired outside of JBSA on Wednesday. Remember, in Wednesday, the base went into lockdown after JBSA's operations center received reports of possible shots fired near the base around noon. Several law enforcement agencies searched the area for the possible suspects. Nothing could be found. And at last check, no one was injured. If you still need to get your vaccine, there is there are pop up clinics happening today. It is happening at the Restore Adult Education Center on San Pedro Avenue from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. They are offering the Pfizer vaccine and the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. We have more information on this location in the next week's pop up clinic schedule online right now. KSAT.com. Time now, 808, 78 degrees out. When improving your home, there's always a lot of questions of whether to do it yourself or hire an expert. Still ahead on GMSA, we tell you when to break out your toolbox and when to hand it over to a pro. And if you want to spend a, an awesome or a possum, see what I did there? Saw that. Possum time with some furry friends. Well, summer is perfect time to do it. We're going to explain how next. Well, you can spend the day walking your your mm. your your dog because your possum, your possum friend. <laughs> Look how beautiful it wow. is out there. The sun is out. Sarah Spivey will have our full weekend forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Well, if you love animals, there are some fun things you can do this summer that will benefit. Our furry friends, the San Antonio Humane Society says they are always in need of volunteers. That's right. So the director of development and public relations, Kim Hinzey, says there are so many ways that you can help out. We've got a great volunteer program and we do just individuals that want to volunteer. We do companies that come in with they have groups of people that want to volunteer. So, yes, absolutely. And there's multiple things from dog walking to doing things inside the office to help out multiple. Multiple opportunities. So if you're interested, if you want more information on how to volunteer, you can visit SAHumaneSociety.org. Click on the Volunteer Program tab. You do have to be 16 or older, though. And if you are between 16 and 17, your parents will need to sign the volunteer release forms. I mean, you're, you're volunteering, you're right. giving back, but you're also getting to interact and play with these adorable kittens and And I've been dogs. to the San Antonio Humane Society. I've actually done a couple events with them. That is an amazing facility. And there are so many people that go through that facility and volunteer and they say it is uh, one of the most rewarding things that they can do. So I'm glad that that is an opportunity now for folks 
especially even the younger folks too, to get involved. So. It's good therapy for everyone. Yes, absolutely. And we are going to love this weekend weather this weekend. It is going to be a little hot, but at least there's sunshine for outdoor activities outside right now. Those morning clouds are starting to clear. It's still mostly cloudy, however, at the airport and 77 degrees. We've got a south wind at five miles per hour, and those winds will be from the southeast today, keeping our humidity pretty high. It's 80 at Stinson. 76 in Bulverde, 76 in Canyon Lake, 77 in New Braunfels, 75 in Seguin, 73 the wake up temperature in Kerrville, 71 in Lost Maples. But again, the humidity is pretty high. Dew points are in the low to mid 70s. Now throughout the day, these are going to decrease a little bit into the 60s, but it's still going to be enough of a factor to where we're going to have to deal with the heat index value today. It'll feel awfully close to 100 degrees around San Antonio. So over the next couple of hours, these Clouds are going to clear and in the afternoon we're going to have mostly sunny to completely sunny skies and that's going to allow our temperatures to warm up pretty quickly. In fact, 100 degrees for the high in Del Rio, 100 in Eagle Pass, 101 in Carrizo Springs, 97 in Uvalde and 96 for the high in Hondo. It'll be in the low 90s in the Hill Country in Kerrville, 92 in Gonzales as well and 93 in Beeville. Here in San Antonio, 80 at 10, 84 at noon, mostly sunny skies and then 93 for the high temperature today, but again, that 93 will feel more like 100 because of the higher humidity. South southeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set around 835 this evening and will cool down slowly back into the 80s by 10 o'clock this evening. Now on the weather pattern, interesting feature I want to talk about. You can see that there's a complex of storms that worked its way through Oklahoma City down toward the Red River and is starting to fall apart as it's moving into places in East Texas. Uh, we have seen a heat high really be dominant over the last week, and that has kept out rain chances for about a week here. But notice that this complex of storms formed on the east side of this heat high. Now, over the next couple of days, this heat high is going to move west and north, and then here in San Antonio, we'll be on the east side of that heat high. Uh, and so over the next several days, starting tomorrow night through about Thursday, we're going to have to carry a chance for rain. It's a small chance, 20%, but that's just in case one of these complexes can develop and push to the south and make it to San Antonio. So again, a 20% chance for rain starting uh, tomorrow night through uh, the uh, middle of this next work week. Then we're also paying attention to the tropics. New uh, potential for development here. There's some unorganized cloudiness and rain across parts of the Bay of Campeche, and this is about a 40% chance into developing into a tropical system over the next five days. Even higher chance, I think, outside of the next five days. But still, this is something to watch. It's way too early to tell if a system develops, where it would go, uh, but we'll keep an eye on things for you. Now, heat index values near 100 both today and tomorrow, and then that small chance for rain Monday through Thursday. Hey, coming up in the forecast, if you want to head to one of our, our state parks, our local state parks, I've got a forecast for you coming up soon. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Thanks, Spivey. Sarah. Thank you. 816, 77 degrees out. Waterburger fans love the burger chain so much that the beloved chain says they are flooded with Waterburger fan art. Mm. What Waterburger says they will now do to honor that art. We were very excited about that story this morning. Uh, yes. <laughs> Plus, we know a lot of people working on home improvement projects. So when should you do it yourself and when should you call in the pros? David Sears breaks it all down next. When it comes to home improvement projects, the question of whether to do it yourself or hire a pro is one that is often top of the mind. All right, you the house. Uh, hire a pro. I, <laughs> Personally, <right>. I would. <laughs> so we are talking about when to break out the toolbox and when to hand it on over to a pro. David Sears has the details. While there are some home renovation projects you can definitely tackle on your own, there are others that should always be left to a pro. But when it comes to your specific project, how do you know which option is best? When considering a DIY project, always think about whether you have the three T's, the time, the tools, and the talent. If you're short on any of these, it's better to call in a pro and get the job done right. So you have the time, tools, and talent for your project, which means you can DIY. Now the question is, should you? Just because you can do a job yourself doesn't always mean you should. 
Two types of projects where we always recommend bringing in a pro are plumbing and electrical. Even if you have the three T's, the smallest mistake can make things really dangerous. So it's always best to have a pro. There are dozens of different projects that are great to DIY, both inside and outside the home. So go around your home and make a list of the projects that need to be done. And you may be surprised how many you can complete in a single weekend. Caulking your windows, draining and flushing your water heater, and edging your plant beds are all projects you can DIY in just an hour or two. If you have even more time, don't be afraid to take on larger projects, like painting an accent wall or installing a new backsplash in your kitchen. If you're still unsure if you should DIY your project or not, talk to a professional. While it may seem counterproductive to call a pro for a DIY project, it can end up saving you time and money in the long run. At the end of the day, a pro will be able to advise you on whether you can safely complete a project DIY. If you choose to go DIY without asking a pro first, just be aware that if anything goes wrong, you might end up costing yourself more in repairs than what it would have cost a pro to do it right the first time. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. All right, so what do you uh, attempt by yourself? Nothing. <laughs> I, I can plant, garden outside, job. I can landscape. Anything inside, call in a pro. That's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. All right, 822, 77 degrees out. Well, Whataburger fans love the burger chain so much that passion for the orange and white chain has driven them to create art. Oh. What Whataburger is now doing with all their fan art. I hope they have some of the Whataburger shoes. All right, yes, there are Whataburger huh. shoes. Huh. Taking a look at birthdays today. First up, we have Ellison, three years old. Happy birthday, Ellison. I think that's an R2-D2 Yeah, a little R2-D2, so cute. And this is Daniela. She is 29 years old. Happy birthday, Daniela. Keep posting those birthday pictures at ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning and welcome back. So if you love Whataburger, which so many of us do. Love Whataburger. We have some great news for you. The Whataburger Museum of Art is now open, at least on social media. So go ahead and take a look. The burger chain said on Twitter, due to all the fan art they have received, they created a fan art museum on Instagram. Mm. It's called Whataburger Museum of Art, or the WMOA. W-M-O-A. Well, no, like the, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, moment, yeah. yeah. Oh, for, for short, it already has over 1,200 followers and count. I got to throw it a follow. Some of the work featured artists from San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, even all the way from California. So if you want to be a Whataburger artist, you can submit your Whataburger themed art. The only thing you need to do is share it on Instagram and tag the, go for it. Wamoa. The Wamoa. <laughs> there we go. I'm intrigued. Are you going to submit any art? Maybe, I don't know. I'm not that talented. <laughs> Time now, 827, 77 degrees out. Well, today, Blue Origins is set to draw the lucky winner who will be joining billionaire Jeff Bezos on a trip into space. Oh. We have the details next. And are you ready to speed your way up to some fun with Hot Wheels? Still ahead, a new theme park that's going to be opening soon. Austin police as well as federal authorities are investigating a shooting that happened on 6th Street overnight and left more than 10 people in the hospital. We have the latest details from Austin just ahead here on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. 8.30 this morning, Saturday, June 12th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We clearly have a lot to talk about. And we'll check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. But first, we continue our coverage of Austin, where 13 people were shot and are recovering in the hospital. The shooter still on the run. That's right. A chaotic night on the streets of Austin. The shooting happening just before 1.30 this morning. The 400 block of East 6th Street, just a few blocks away from I-35. And that's where we find Alicia Barrera, who has been there throughout the morning. Alicia, what do we know so far? Good morning. Well, we know of those 13 victims who are in the hospital. Two of them are in critical condition. And last we heard from Austin PD was around 4 a.m. And as of that hour, no fatalities had been reported. But again, we've moved closer to this scene. We're literally just a few feet away. So I'm going to step out here and that way you can get a better idea. So again, we're maybe a quarter of a mile, half a mile at the most from I-35. And this is usually blocked off at night, always blocked off on 6th Street, just to make it safer for uh, visitors here. So it happened, a fight, we're told by witnesses who I spoke to off camera, that there was a fight that was happening just in the middle of the street here. Um, some did hear gunshots, others did not. 
not. And then all they remember is just everyone, you know, in chaos and then EMS and police making their way in here to carry those victims out. So the scene again, very chaotic. It happened on the 400 block of East 6th Street. The initial calls came around uh, right before 1.30, so 1.24 a.m. The amount of victims, again, it started with just three, and then as just minutes went by, they counted up to 13 victims. We know EMS was on scene, uh, police, of course, and fire. Again, no deaths have been reported, but two people are in critical condition here at a local hospital. Another thing, another thing to note is that this area is open once again, which is, again, we've talked about it, very surprising. We know Austin police um, had the area shut down, and of course, they're gonna be looking at a lot of surveillance video to try to identify exactly who the suspect is. Earlier, we mentioned uh, the suspect is still on the run. Who they're looking for, they have a very, very vague description, and that was, of course, provided by witnesses on the scene. They say it's a man with more of a skinny build, was wearing a black T-shirt, and had dreadlocks. And they are looking at those videos that are circulating already online, but around here, it's common to see those surveillance cameras. So again, Austin PD, as well as federal authorities, they're carrying out their investigation, FBI to be exact looking into that again to hopefully identify a suspect sooner rather than later because he could be armed. Reporting live from Austin, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And we'll be hearing from Alicia every half hour with those updates. Absolutely. All right, time now to take a check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, you say it's going to be sunny, almost summery this weekend. Very summery this weekend. Although summer doesn't officially start until the 20th, there's still going to be a lot of folks out there trying to enjoy some time outdoors. Let's say you're heading to one of our state parks and want to know what the weather is going to be. Enchanted Rock area, 92 for the high temperature. Government Canyon, 93. If you're going out to Valverde County, 102 degrees for the high Devil's River State Natural Area. Uh, here in San Antonio, we'll be in the low 90s as well. Right now, it's 77 degrees outside, 79 in New Braunfels, 79 in Del Rio, 79 in Kennedy, 80 in Gonzales, and 77 up in Austin. This weekend is going to be very warm, very summery. Uh, we've had some morning clouds, but those are starting to fade away, and it's going to be mostly sunny, 93 with the heat index close to 100. Very similar weather tomorrow. Sunday as we round out the weekend and in the week ahead there is a small chance for rain coming up in the forecast. We're going to check on the tropics and we just got the pollen count in. So I'll have an update on that in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A man in the hospital this morning after being hit by an SUV on the city's west side. Let's take a look. This was a situation just before midnight. 1600 block of Castroville Road. Police on the scene telling us that the man was crossing the street when he was hit by the vehicle. Officers telling us the driver did not stop to render aid, did not help the man out. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Castroville Road was shut down for several hours. It has since been reopened, but the investigation to find out who is responsible still ongoing. In your morning headlines, today marks the fifth anniversary of the Pulse shooting in Orlando. 49 people were killed in the shooting. On June 12th of 2016, the gunman killed 49 victims during a three-hour standoff with police. He was later killed by SWAT team members. He pledged loyalty to the Islamic State during that standoff. This week, the community has been honoring the victims with different activities, such as a community run, a chorus performance, and a street dance party. The tributes will end today with a remembrance ceremony outside the Pulse nightclub. Well, the teen who filmed George Floyd's murder being honored by the Pulitzer Prize Board. Darnell Frazier receiving a special citation. Frazier witnessed Floyd's killing back on May 25th of 2020. She recorded former police officer Derek Chauvin pressing his knee into Floyd's neck, posted the video on Facebook. Her video sparking protests against police brutality around the world. The board says that Frazier's actions highlight, quote, the crucial role of citizens in journalism and their quest for truth and justice, end quote. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin are expected to meet on Wednesday, but White House staffers say not to expect a joint press conference. The final plans are still being finalized. The president has not said what the two will be talking about. The Biden administration says they may not hold a press conference with both presidents after the meeting. Three years ago, former President Donald Trump held a joint press conference in which he sided with Putin over the allegations of Russian interference in the U.S. election. 
Now to the race for space. In just a few hours, the auction begins on who will join billionaire Jeff Bezos on a trip into space. And as you can imagine, the cheap is not the seat is not cheap. No, it's not. <laughs> space tourism set to take off. And now there's apparently fierce competition on who will get there first. All right, ABC's Gio Benitez has the latest. This morning, we're just hours away from an auction that'll be watched around the world for a seat on Blue Origin spaceship, New Shepard. We're auctioning off the first seat. Blue Origin, the space company founded by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, will launch Bezos, his brother, and the winner of that auction to the edge of the atmosphere for a view unlike any other. You see the Earth from space, it changes you. It changes your relationship with this planet, with humanity. It's one Earth. I want to go on this flight because it's a thing I've wanted to do all my life. It's an adventure. It's a big deal for me. I invited my brother to come on this first flight because we're closest friends. Bezos making that announcement just days ago. But joining Bezos won't be cheap. The 11 minutes at the edge of space will cost at least $4.8 million. That's where bidding will start today. Blue Origin saying more than 7,500 people from 159 countries registered to bid on the July 20th flight. While some argue that these are billionaires going on a space joyride, astronautics researchers say it's much more than that. You know, a brief sounding rocket sometimes costs millions of dollars. This can have repeat access to space by many times less with a human operator. So it's going to create more opportunity to do science at a lower cost point. And now at least one report saying Virgin Galactic's Richard Branson may be trying to beat Bezos to space. Virgin Galactic neither confirming nor denying that report. And it may be weeks before we know who the winner of that auction is, but we do know that the money will go to Blue Origins Foundation to inspire young people to pursue careers in space research. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, back here on Earth, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center continues to need about 600 donors a day to rebuild the low blood supply here locally. That's why this morning they're having two blood drive events, one Garden Ridge Community Center, 9 a.m. until 3 p.m., the other at the Kendra Scott location at the quarry from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you want to make an appointment, just call the number on your screen, 210-731-5590 or visit southtexasblood.org. They're also giving away Fiesta medals if you donate while supplies last. So get out there and help save some lives. Time now just about 840, 78 degrees out. Well, Mattel is opening a theme park where you can speed your way to some fun. We have the details next. And today is Saturday. That means we have a new episode of Texas Eats coming up at 10 a.m. We have a preview next. 78 degrees at 840 this morning. The sun oh, is wow. out. Sarah Spivey says it's going to be a sunny weekend. She'll have her full, full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Today we have a special preview of today's episode of Texas Eats. David Elder takes us inside a Tex-Mex restaurant that's been serving San Antonio since 1937. Take a look. Uh, the green enchilada plate, how popular is this one? It's, it's actually one of our most popular plates. Um, I think that because they're a little spicy and then the sour cream mell mellows it out, but it's, it's really popular. It's actually our specials on Fridays and we're always, always packed on this that This is your day. Friday special. Friday special, yes. There you go, come here on Fridays, you can get this. Here we go, green enchiladas, this is a bite. But it's, it's the tortillas that are on there. Yeah, so and the texture is so good. So basically our corn is what gives everything else the flavor. Yes. So this is uh, one, like some of our specialties that we, we have. So we have the guacamole cup is one of our, our most popular. Also the bean cup is really popular. You can basically get whatever they want in a cup <laughs> in a if cup, they, just, yeah. they just order it. Those are gonna be how the restaurant started uh, with the little puffy tacos. So these right here, it's also one of the very first items on the menu when the restaurant first started, and those are gonna be, it's sort of like a quesadilla. I want a bean cup. Yeah, but here's the thing. We always show these previews before I have to go and talk about the weather, <laughs> and I'm always worried that my stomach's gonna be rumbling when I we're know. talking about the weather. 
But that looks like a really great episode. I'm excited to see it this morning. I promised to show you the pollen count uh, before the break, and here it is. You know, it's it's good news. Molds are actually down from yesterday. They were past 3,000 yesterday. Now moderate at 710. Pigweed and grass are present, but in low amounts. So not too bad of a pollen count. Do we wish those molds were a little lower? Yes, but it could be worse out there. Right now outside, these skies are clearing. We are going to see a ton of sunshine today, which means a ton of heat. 77 degrees outside, still mostly cloudy though at the airport south winds at five miles per hour. It's already 80 in Gonzales, 80 in Kennedy, 73 in Rock Springs, 74 in Uvalde, waking up in Del Rio at 79 degrees and 79 in Pleasanton. The humidity is going to play a big factor today like it has the last couple of days. In the afternoons, these dew points are going to make it feel much hotter than what the thermometer actually reads, although dew points will not be as high as they are this morning this afternoon, more likely in the 60s, which is still muggy and still noticeable. Showing you the future cast here, these clouds are going to clear and then it's going to be nothing but sunshine this afternoon. No chance for rain around San Antonio or even around the coastal community. So if you want to head out to uh, Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, enjoy some time by the beach, uh, today's going to be a great day to do that tomorrow as well. No real chance for rain out there near uh, the beach here in San Antonio. We'll be looking at temperatures climbing steadily around noon. It'll be 84, 90 at 2 p.m., 93 for the high temperature today in San Antonio. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set around 834 and temperatures will slowly fall into the 70s by midnight. As I mentioned, though, the humidity is going to be a big factor today. And so even though it's going to be 93 for the high, it'll feel like 100 degrees in San Antonio and New Braunfels, feeling like 102 in Pleasanton, 104 in Del Rio and 104 in Catula. So definitely a summery day out there for us, not only today, but also tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast will be very similar to today. Showing you the weather pattern right now, you can see that complex of storms that started off in Oklahoma City, tracked all the way across the Red River, and is now pushing into parts of uh, northeastern Texas near the Texarkana area. This is on the east side of a heat high, and this heat high has been in place for uh, several days here. That's why we've been dry. That's why we've been seeing warmest temperatures that we've been seeing for quite some time. Now this heat high is going to move a little bit to the north and to the west and notice how that complex formed on the east side of this heat high. Now over the next few days we're going to have a possibility to see a couple of uh, showers and storms from North Texas work their way down to San Antonio. We're only going to include a 20% chance for rain starting tomorrow night Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Small chance for an isolated shower storm, but the chances there. Of course, we'll keep an eye on things for you, uh, but for the most part, it'll be another humid and warm work week ahead. Another thing we're going to keep our eye on is an unorganized area of cloudiness and rain across the Bay of Campeche. This is a potential for development over the next five days, about 40% beyond that. So toward the end of this upcoming week, we could see even more development as a possibility too. So we'll keep an eye on things. It's difficult to know this far out where or if it'll have any impacts across coastlines, but we'll keep you updated and we love to keep you updated through our hurricane tracker app. A hurricane season in Atlantic lasts all the way to the end of November and we can send notifications right to your phone uh, through that hurricane tracker app, which is free to download. Now today again, feeling like 100 degrees, feeling like 100 tomorrow as well. And then warm in the week ahead, toasty with only a small chance for rain. Coming up, I'll show you your poolside forecast, and we'll even do a little weather trivia. So we're excited about that, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. You know, if you are getting outside, member, stay hydrated. That's right. Be smart. Be safe. Just about 850, 78 degrees out. And soon you'll be able to put more smiles at see more smiles, the most magical place on Earth. We'll tell you why next. Good morning, welcome back. In your morning consumer news, prices for new and used cars soaring, and they're not going to be stopping anytime soon. J.D. Power says the average new car price hit a record in May and more than $38,000. J.D. Power says May's seasonally adjusted rates for new car sales rose 34% compared from a year ago. That's up nearly 11% compared with the sales in May of 2019, pre-pandemic. The company says strong sales and limited supply that is what is feeding the price boom. And soon there'll be more smiles at the most magical place 
on Earth. That's right. So starting Tuesday, vaccinated guests at Disney World no longer have to wear masks in most of the areas. So the mask policy comes after the Orange County area lifted all local mask recommendations on June 5th. Disney still expects guests who are not fully vaccinated to continue to wear masks in all indoor areas. The park is also relaxing social distancing guidelines. They say some attractions may still have a limited capacity. And get ready to hit the gas on those Hot Wheels. I love Hot Wheels. You did? I did. I was a big, I had like built the tracks and everything. It was a it was more throwback. A, a Barbie girl. Well, there is a Mattel branded theme park going up in Arizona. The theme park will feature a Hot Wheels themed roller coaster mm. and a life size Thomas the Tank Engine passenger train. All right, so the park being developed alongside a massive water park called Crystal Lagoons Island Resort. Park expected to open sometime this year. Yeah. Power Ranger action figures and Hot Wheels. That was my childhood. Power Rangers, yes. Yeah. Ninja Turtles, yes. Mm -hmm. Barbie, yes. All right. A54, 79 degrees out. A unique tradition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see, you see what it says right there on screen. <laughs> we'll tell you about this interesting tradition in Philadelphia next. All right. First, we are taking a look at birthdays. First up, we have Chevy, three years old. Oh, happy birthday. And this is Emily. She is 19 years old. Happy birthday, Emily. Keep posting those pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. All right, to a story Sarah Costa has been talking about throughout the morning. No shoes, no shirt, no problem. <laughs> All right, organizers of the annual Philly Naked Bike Ride event says it will take place on August 28th. Mm -hmm. This year <laughs> will, be, will be their big return since the start of the pandemic. This year, riders will not have to wear anything. No clothes, nothing, but they will be required to wear a mask. All right, so Philadelphia's group is a part of a larger organization called World Naked Bike Ride. It hosts bike rides in more than a dozen countries. And in case you're wondering, the events are supposed to highlight, quote, the negative social and environmental impacts of a car dominated culture. Aren't you quote. from Philly, Max? I am. And you said you've never heard of this event. I have never heard of this event. We run in different circles or ride in different circles, I, I can, guess. Clearly. <laughs> All right, time now, 857, 78 degrees out. Well, if you're tired of playing Angry Birds, the San Antonio Humane Society has a perfect game for you. We'll tell you all about it ahead. Plus, well, the Democrats committed to passing legislation this year to curb prescription drug prices. We have the latest on what lawmakers are trying to do. Right now on GMSA at 9 a.m., the latest on that mass shooting in downtown Austin. Our Alicia Rivera live on 6th Street where it all went down. We have the latest details from investigators. Plus, three people were shot outside a San Antonio bar on the city's east side. How police say it happened and details on the victim's conditions. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, what looks like it could be a very summery weekend here in San Antonio. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. 9 o'clock this Saturday, June 12th. Clearly a lot to talk about this morning. Definitely a lot to talk about. All right, so we are starting with that shooting over in Austin. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a few moments. But if you haven't heard yet, 13 people shot in Austin overnight and the suspect still on the run. Chaos, fear, confusion, and blood. That's the aftermath of that shooting that broke out in the middle of a very crowded 6th Street in Austin early this morning. Austin police say the shooting happened just before 1.30 a.m. On the, in the 400 block of 6th Street. Alicia Barra live on 6th Street with information from authorities and even speaking to witnesses. So, Alicia, what's the latest on the shooter? Well, unfortunately, that shooter's still on the run. Police, Austin police say that they're looking for a man, skinny build, black t-shirts, dreadlocks. But of course, that information is preliminary. It could change as the day goes on. Um, but that's what Austin PD, that's who Austin PD says that they're looking for. But exactly where did this shooting happen? Just right behind me, a few feet away, right in the middle of the street between Toulouse Bar and the Museum of the Weird. The closest landmarks that I can give you are probably a block, about a block away from the West End, maybe two blocks away from the Convention Center. The first call for a shooting came in minutes before 1.30 this morning, and the number of victims just increased as those seconds went by. According to Austin PD, 
13 people were shot. Six people were transported to the hospital by police, another four by EMS, and three people had to take themselves to the hospital. As of 4 a.m., no deaths have been reported, but again, two people are in critical condition. I do believe that it was uh, the, the actions of our officers who responded very quickly and have been trained in life-saving measures, including uh, use of their first aid kits and tourniquets that they carry on their person uh, to be able to uh, quickly apply that first aid and, and help people uh, that were in uh, serious uh, injury, serious distress. The crime scene has been cleared as of this hour, but the investigation is in its preliminary stage with investigators, of course, reviewing numerous surveillance cameras in the area. We know they have those halo cameras set up in downtown, so they'll be looking over those as well as officer body cam footage. Austin PD has requested federal partners to help with the investigation. We know that FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force will handle their independent investigation. There's no exact cause right now. That is still being determined by authorities. And Austin PD did add that although it was a very scary night, of course, with crowds just increasing, although we are in the middle of a pandemic, they have seen large crowds. They're thankful that as of 4 a.m. this morning, no fatalities have been reported. We're live in Austin, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, police are trying to figure out what happened after three people were shot outside a bar on the city's east side. It happened just before two this morning in, on North New Braunfels and Hayes Street near a local bar. Police say three people are in the hospital this morning. Two women were taken to Bamsey in critical condition. One man drove himself to University Hospital but is expected to be okay. Officers tell us they found at least 14 shell casings on the street. Detectives are currently looking at the video from that local bar to see what actually happened. And a man in critical condition this morning after being hit by an SUV last night while trying to cross the street on the city's west side. San Antonio police telling us this is what it looked like around 1145 last night. A man in his 30s crossing the 1600 block of Cashoville Road. That's when an SUV hit him. Now, the driver did not stop, did not render aid, did not help the man out. Witnesses telling police the SUV that hit the man was a tan color with damages to the front. Now, that victim taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Castroville Road was shut down for several hours for investigators to process the scene. And police are searching for the suspect who shot and killed a man on the southeast side of town last night. San Antonio police say witnesses called 911 saying they heard gunshots just after 10 p.m. at the reserve at Pecan Valley Apartments on East South Cross. When SAPD arrived, they say they found a 22-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the chest. First responders performed CPR on the man who was then transported to Bamsey where he later died. Police on scene did not have a description of the suspect and are still working to figure out exactly what happened and why. All right, taking a live look out at the roadways. Green grass, blue skies, everything seems to be going smoothly right now. So we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, can we expect beautiful weather this weekend? We definitely can. In fact, you're going to want to find a body of water to cool off around, whether that be a local lake, a local pool, or perhaps traveling down to the coast. Things are going to be nice and summery this weekend. Right now outside, skies are clearing. It is 79 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Speaking of the pool, if you wanted to head out, here's what you can expect uh, for your poolside forecast. At noon, it'll be 84 and humid. Mostly sunny this afternoon with temperatures climbing into the low to mid 90s. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour in the afternoon. It'll feel though like 100 degrees. It could be a lot worse though than the low 90s. We could actually be seeing the thermometer at 100 degrees. So for our weather 101 trivia question on average, when does San Antonio record the first 100 degree day? I'll have the answer to this and we will check on the tropics in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max, hope you're ready. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. In your morning headlines, United States plans to push Democratic allies to publicly call out China for forced labor practices. This comes as a group of seven leaders gather for day two of their summit in England. 
Leaders will also unveil an infrastructure plan meant to compete with Beijing's efforts in the developing world. President Joe Biden is trying to get fellow Democratic leaders attending the summit to present a more unified front to compete economically with China in the century ahead. Meanwhile, Apple, the phone company and technology company working to protect its image. Now, prosecutors with former President Donald Trump's Justice Department actually subpoenaed Apple for data from at least two Democrats who served on the House Intelligence Committee, as well as aides and their family members, one of whom was a minor. Democrats are committed to passing legislation this year to curb prescription drug prices, but they disagree on how to cut costs for patients and taxpayers while preserving profits that entice investors to back promising treatments. In the House, Speaker Nancy Pelosi is pushing legislation that imposes a steep tax on drug makers refusing to deal with Medicare. The Senate is starting from a less ambitious bipartisan bill that would limit price increases, but not initial prices. Time now is 9.08, 80 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, watching North Carolina principal dazzle a graduating class and creepy critters oh. cause a man to get into a car accident. And coming up next, Fiesta, just about here. San Antonio, are you ready to party? We're going to take a look at some of the events and what you need to know before you head over. So glad Fiesta's coming back. 80 degrees outside, the sun is out. Sarah Spivey says it's going to be a sunny weekend. She'll tell you more about it when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Fiesta is so close to getting to San Antonio, so it is time to get in the Fiesta spirit. It's nice to, for Fiesta to be back. To celebrate, there are many events going on around town, and we have made a list for for you right now on ksat.com so you can see oh, everything happening. Sarah Spivey. There's Sarah Spivey. So it, ha it starts June 17th and runs through the 27th and it includes Fiesta de los Reyes, the Porch Parade, the Ford Mariachi Festival, Nyosa, and a day in Old Mexico, just to name a few. To read about them, just look for the article on our homepage. That guys, was uh, such a fun night a couple of years ago. With when Adam was that? Yeah, that was, was like two years ago, 2019. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What are you guys most excited for this year? Um, I'm just excited to see Adam Kasky with that huge confetti can. The yes. and, and Yeah, it should be nice and fun. <laughs> so uh, really looking forward to that. How about you guys? You know, I, I've covered NIOS. I've never gone as mm -hmm. a participant. You should, you should go. Everybody should go. At Chicken least. on a stick. Chicken Sold. on a stick. There so we go. <laughs> All right, we got a quiz. Yeah, I pose this question to you and our KSAT viewers at home. You know, it could be a lot worse. We could be mm. at 100 degrees instead Ooh. of the low 90s. So on average, when does San Antonio record its first 100 degree day? I'm going to go with D. Sarah's mm. going to go with D. Okay, I'm going to go 4th of July. All right, both of you guys are extra wrong <laughs> this morning. It's June 25th, the end of June, we usually see our first 100 degree day. Although in 2007, we did not record any kind of 100 degree days around San Antonio. So uh, we are kind of right on schedule because we're not yet going to see the hundreds this week, but it's going to feel like it out there today with the high humidity outside right now. Some puffy cumulus clouds. That's about it. Uh, it's 79 degrees and skies are starting to clear. Southeast winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour and humidity is high. Dew points are in the low 70s. 77 in Comfort, 76 in Kerrville, 74 in Lost Maples, 81 in New Braunfels, 81 at JBSA Randolph. Starting to get into the 80s at Stinson too, where it's 83 degrees and 80 in Pleasanton. Now, right now, dew points are very high. They're in the low 70s. That is oppressively humid. Into the afternoon, we're going to see dew points drop a little bit into the 60s. So it's still going to be muggy. We're still going to have a heat index value, but it won't be oppressively humid outside, which is good news. Again, skies are clearing, and in the future cast, we're going to have mostly sunny skies today in the afternoon with uh, high temperatures really getting up there, especially out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, where temperatures will reach the triple digits. Meanwhile, low 90s up in the hill country, 94 in New Braunfels, 92 in Gonzales, 96 in Pleasanton. And here in San Antonio, here's what our forecast is going to look like. 84 at noon and then 93 for the afternoon high temperature, feeling more like 100 degrees. Sun will set around 834. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Once the sun sets, it'll be a pretty mild and nice evening if you want to enjoy some time outdoors this Saturday night. Now on the weather pattern, you can really see clearly a uh, 
convective system, a line of storms that moved through Oklahoma City and the Red River. It's just hanging out east of Dallas right now. This is riding on the east side of an upper level ridge of high pressure. Now, this upper level ridge of high pressure is what's kept us dry for the last seven days, and it's what's allowed for our temperatures to rise. Over the next several days, this upper level high is going to move to the west and to the north, and then we'll be on the east side of that system here in San Antonio. And so we'll have to watch any complexes that develop in North Texas to see if they can hold on to San Antonio. But because of that, I've went ahead and uh, included a 20% chance for rain from tomorrow night through Thursday because that high is just going to hang out to our west and give us that northerly flow. Uh, but we're also going to be paying close attention over the next several days to the tropics. In the Bay of Campeche, there is a disorganized area of cloud cover and storminess that does have a 40% chance to develop into a tropical system over the next five days. And even beyond that, we'll continue to watch this. Now, it is way too early to determine if anything develops, where it would go, how strong it would be, what the impacts would be. So we're just keeping an eye on things. And of course, we'll continue to keep you updated. For now, though, just know that this weekend is going to be very toasty with high temperatures in the low to mid 90s, feeling closer to 100 degrees. And then in the week ahead, a chance for rain every day, but that chance for rain will be low. Other than that, it's going to be hot and humid, and we are in the middle of feeling like summer. Hey, coming up, I'll have the pollen count for you. There's been some improvement in that department. Sarah, Max? Thank you, Sarah. I know you're upset with on brain. I, I like rain because it's cooler. It's true. But if you are on about, bring water, be safe, be smart. 916, 81 degrees now. San Antonio Humane Society has a new fun game you can play on your phone this summer. We'll give you a preview in just a bit. And it is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats. David Elder taking us to a classic American diner in green right on the banks of the Guadalupe River. That's next in this morning's final Texas Eats preview. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, one, fireball two, daily four, five, eight, five, seven, fireball eight. Cash five, six, seven, 13, 23, 35. Mega millions, four, 43, 56, 63, 68, big number 13. Mega fire four, good luck. We'll be right back. Here on this pork chop though, what's going on? So we got a bone-in pork chop, we cut in-house, uh, it has a little jalapeno mandarin glaze Ooh. on top, we grill that, we finish in the oven, and uh, it's good eating. <laughs> it's good eating. Yeah. And then you got that little bit of spice going on, a little bit of sweet heat, that's what you want with the pork. I want to get some of this action right there. Come on. That's the bite right there. Ooh. That's nice. How popular is this dish? We sell a lot, uh, quite a lot. <laughs> Give me some love, man, yes, that's, that's wonderful. I love the bone-in flavor too, so you're gonna get a lot of that flavor from the bone into the meat, green beans on the side, a little bit of mashed potatoes, but I, I bet you can like mix that side up, right? You got some rice over Absolutely. here as well. Absolutely, so we have yeah. uh, like a basmati rice that we use. You can use, you know, new potatoes that we have on the ribeye. There's all kinds of stuff. If you wanted fries, you get fries too. So whatever you That's like. what I'm talking about right here. The Guadalupe is right behind us. I mean, what a killer spot to be at here in green. Um, and you know, you're serving up food like this, it doesn't get any better. So talk to me about this ribeye, what's going on? Very fortunate. So this is a certified agent. Food. I like that. What do you say? If you want fries, you get fries. Like it's just, it, it, I just always get so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 921, 81 degrees out already. Well, the principal turns graduation into a concert and a chichata causes a car accident. That's coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. A high school principal performing a powerful classic song and bringing the house down all at graduation. CNN's Jeremy Roth shares the stories in today's Take a Look at This. Watch a North Carolina principal dazzle a graduating class by channeling Whitney Houston. Marcus Goss says he sings every year, but had a special connection to this year's graduating class. This class was my first year. Um, they were freshmen my first year in. And I wish you joy and Goss says the song echoed sentiments of all faculty and staff after a unique and challenging year. Part of it was, I hope that life treats you kind. Um, and I hope that you get all you've ever dreamed of. Love you. And emergency.
emergency responders will always help you, even when you're trapped teetering on the edge of a dam. That was the nail-biting scenario that unfolded on a Texas lake when a loaded boat almost went over a dam. Emergency personnel were able to lower life vests to the four passengers and get them to safety, even with the vessel partially over the top of the dam. Finally, not a fan of cicadas? This'll bug ya. In Cincinnati, a man was involved in an accident he says was caused by a cicada. The man was driving with his windows down when he says a cicada flew in and hit him in the face, causing him to swerve and hit a telephone pole. He's okay, but had this advice for others. Keep your windows up. Try not to react like I did. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Things it, are terrifying. It's hard not to like dramatically react because yeah. it, they, when they hit you, they're, they're, they're like, they're big. Yeah, keep the windows up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time now, just about 927, 81 degrees out. We're still ahead at 930. Extra unemployment money is coming to an end for many states. The impact it's now having on Americans still struggling because of the pandemic. Moments of fear and chaos break out after a man opens fire towards a crowd of people on Austin's 6th Street. We have the details and I'll be answering questions just ahead here on GMSA. Good morning and happy Saturday, 930 this morning, June 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And what a beautiful morning, Sarah. I mean, the sun's been out and that's going to be pretty much the weekend. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, we are going to have a very summery weekend uh, and it's going to be great for outdoor activities as long as you can find some way to stay cool. Even the pollen count is all right today. Molds are moderate rather than high. Molds are moderate at 710 pigweed grass are low and molds are down from 3000 yesterday. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. We had some morning clouds, but those have really since started to clear and what we're left with are a few puffy cumulus clouds around San Antonio and out toward the east. Uh, it's totally sunny, however, toward Del Rio Eagle Pass and Rock Springs. Temperatures are already warming up. We're already in the 80s in Del Rio, 82 in Pleasanton, 79 in San Antonio, 83 in New Braunfels. And today we'll be warming up to 93 for the high temperature under mostly sunny skies. Now uh, that 93 is going to feel more like 100 because of the high humidity. Speaking of enjoying some time by bodies of water, if you'd like to go out to Port Aransas or to Corpus Christi, there's only going to be a slight chop to the water today. 85 for the high, but water should be smooth tomorrow and the water temperature 83. So if you want to take a dip into the ocean, you know, the water's going to be plenty warm enough. Now, speaking of the ocean, we have got a look ahead head to uh, the tropics in just a bit. I want to show you an area that we're going to be watching for development. And of course, we'll talk about rain chances in the work week ahead. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the story we've been covering throughout the morning, a mass shooting in Austin that left more than a dozen people injured. And here's what we know so far. So according to Austin police, someone opened fire about 1:30 this morning on 6th Street. That suspect has not been caught. At last report, there were at least 13 people sent to the hospital with injuries, two of them in critical condition. Alicia Byrne has been in Austin throughout the morning. Alicia, set the scene on what happened. Hey, good morning. Well, it's still early on in the investigation and police haven't determined a motive and they haven't found the shooter. That shooter is still on the run. But just imagine how thing, how scary things were. This is a very populated area, especially when you're talking about the evening when those bars open up. We're just a few feet away from where witnesses say those shots were fired and more than a dozen people taken to the hospital. At night, we know 6th Street, it's closed off with barricades, so this becomes a street for pedestrians. And there were massive crowds here last night, of according to Austin PD. So exactly where in this area, this block did it happen? Middle of the street between two bars. We know the bars that have been identified are Toulouse Bar and the Museum of the Weird. And you can actually see some of the fresh stains of blood in the middle of the street. So again, very chaotic night, uh, very scary for those who witnessed uh, what happened last night. Max, Sarah. And Lisa, if you were talking about that chaos, you know, 6th Street is always so crowded. Like you're saying, they close the streets down and there's a lot of pedestrians on the road. So do we know how people reacted when they heard those initial first shots fired? 
So there were mixed reactions. I spoke to some witnesses early this morning who were picking up their uh, motorcycles, and it was two friends. One of them told me they heard the shots, and of course they were freaked out. He hid behind his motorcycle that was just on the opposite side from where I'm standing to try to take cover. But his friend, who was just a few feet away from him, and again, maybe about 10 feet away from where the scene actually was, he said he didn't hear anything. He said it was just music. And then about a few moments later, he noticed that people were on the ground. And then a few minutes after that, that's when he saw EMS and police making their way in. That way they can carry those victims out. So a lot of mixed reaction here. You can just imagine the chaos. And again, Austin PD saying that they're seeing large crowds, perhaps as large as before pandemic, if you can imagine that. I know you referenced it earlier, but what do we know about this suspect, the man responsible for the shooting? So it's very important to stress that they're still looking for that suspect. Right now, the information that we have from police, from Austin police, is that they're looking for a man of a skinny build. He was wearing a black T-shirt and he had dreadlocks. That's the only information that witnesses were able to provide. And again, it's so vague because just to get imagine the chaos, the fear that was running through the witnesses, the people here who were having a good time. Again, a motive. They don't know exactly what gave way to that man pulling out a gun, pulling the trigger, and of course, injuring 13 people. Max, Sarah. And Elias, I have one more question. You've been talking about the street being back yeah. open all morning long. Is this something we typically see after a mass shooting for police to, you know, lift up that crime scene tape? And did police say why they opened the road back up? No, last we heard from Austin PD was around 4 a.m. They went live on Facebook, uh, held a press conference. We were able to listen in on that. And at 4 a.m., again, they had mentioned Austin PD that they were going to keep this road closed for some hours. We showed up here just before 6, and it was already open. We found a parking spot. We've been moving closer to the crime scene. Again, feet away, no police here. So no exact word on why. I did speak to some people who are locals here and that they tell me, well, maybe put two and two together. If it's barricaded, if it's closed off, then yes, PD had a tough time making it in here when that shooting broke out, but perhaps it made it easier for them to assess the crime scene, get what they needed and move their way out. So no clear response from Austin PD or even FBI, who is also investigating on why the street is already open to both vehicles and pedestrians. All right, Alicia Barrera, thank you so much for your report. Well, back here at home, apparent human remains discovered along a San Antonio trail on the northeast side. Investigators tell us someone made the discovery just several feet off the Jack White Park trailhead. That's off I-35 near a high water crossing area on Salado Creek. It happened just before one yesterday afternoon. Bear County Medical Examiner now conducting an investigation on the remains and who it is. Still unclear how long that body had been out there. BCSO working investigating, seeing if they can identify who it is and how this all happened. Police need your help this morning finding two men believed to be armed, dangerous, and on the run. So check out these pictures on your screen. Police say these two suspects are wanted in connection with armed robberies at pharmacies in Seguin. 38-year-old Andre Dupree, Jack, and 37-year-old Alesco Factor are also accused of similar robberies in Sealy and Pleasanton. This is a story we've been following for months, and the cases involve victims being tied up with zip ties. Anyone with information on these suspects is asked to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen right now, 877-403-TIPS. All right, a few things you should know about today, especially when it relates to the vaccines. First, the Pfizer vaccine and Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available to the public. A pop-up clinic open from 10 a.m. this morning to 1 this afternoon. It is happening to the Restore Adult Education Center on San Pedro Avenue. If you can't make it out today, don't worry. There's another one tomorrow as well. That happening at the St. Rose of Lima at 9883 Marbach Road, 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. You can find all this information and so much more. Just head to KSAT.com. HEB is also teaming up for a one day blitz to vaccinate eligible middle school students and their family members. SAISD families and children ages 12 and older are eligible for a free COVID-19 vaccine during these clinics. Vaccination clinics will be held at several neighborhood HEB stores near school campuses. 
Today from 9 a.m. to noon, HEB pharmacies also accept walk-ins daily. Weekday hours are from 9 a.m. to close and weekend hours vary by store. You can register online at SAISD.net slash vaccines. And finally, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center continues to have a big need here in our community. They need about 600 donors every day trying to rebuild the low blood supply for our area. That is why this morning they're having two blood drive events, one at the Garden Ridge Community Center. It started at 9 a.m. and it goes until 3 p.m. The other at the Kendra Scott location at the quarry from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. If you're interested and if you want to save an appointment, or make an appointment, save some lives, just call 210-731-5590 or visit SouthTexasBlood.org. Important to mention, though, they're also giving away Fiesta medals to donors while supplies last. In your morning headlines, jobless Americans in some states losing their extra $300 a week starting now. ABC's Deidre Bolton tells us about this impact of the expiring enhanced benefit. So as of today, there are workers in four states who will have less money in their pockets. So that is Iowa, Missouri, Alaska and Mississippi, at least 300,000 Americans affected. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds tweeting this out. It's time for everyone who can to get back to work. So it's not just these four states in the next few weeks. Workers in 21 additional states will also see their supplementary benefits cut. So in total, as many as four million Americans across 25 states set to lose these unemployment benefits. You have leaders in Arizona, Texas, Ohio. Among those who say this extra $300 a week is overly generous and contributing to complaints from employers who cannot fill job vacancies. But economists point out that for many, it's not a simple equation. Many people relying on those benefits to make ends meet. Gregory Daco from Oxford Economics pointing out that most kids are not vaccinated. Many school districts, child care centers are closed or not operating at full capacity and some workers have personal health issues or live with a high risk person. Those are reasons why some people are not rushing back into the workforce. But some economists say there's really a risk to cutting these benefits off early in that businesses that would have benefited from increased spending may be hurt as people tighten their purse strings. And that was Deirdre Bolton reporting 941, 82 degrees out. Still ahead, building new world with new environments. Oh. We're getting a look at the new Jurassic game and details on when you can expect to play it. Another phone app, but this time it is meant to help the San Antonio Humane Society. Details on what Dog Dash consists of and the hopeful impact. That looks super cute. <laughs> All right, 82 degrees. It's a sunny day, Sarah Spivey says. She'll have her full weekend forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. If you've had phone games before, you probably know what Candy Crush is, but it is time to move over. Candy Crush San Antonio Humane Society has a new fun game that you can play that can actually help out the community. Yeah, it's called Dog Dash. The game consists of a dog that is trying to get away from its owner who wants to give him a bath. Mm. I can relate. The dog has to dig up bones while being chased by the owner. As you collect more bones, you get to move up to the next level. Director of Development and Public Relations Kim Hinsey says the game was created to bring more visibility to the San Antonio Humane Society. This is another really cool way to get the community involved and it's for all ages. And they can go online, they can play it, and it's just, it's really fun and interactive. The San Antonio Humane Society partnered with IMG to create the game. Hinsey says Dog Dash is the perfect way for the family to have fun during the summer, especially during road trips. If you're interested in getting the app, you can download it right now. It's available for Apple and Android users. Have you guys downloaded it yet? I, I'm going to. Sarah, is today a good day to give the dogs a bath? Is it going to be warm yeah. enough out there? <laughs> it is going to be warm enough. But if you are going to be walking your dog, make sure they have some protection for their paws or walk them on the grass because it's going to get hot here pretty quickly. You know, right now outside, it is uh, starting to get into the 80s. Officially at the airport, though, it's 79 degrees, partly cloudy with some puffy cumulus out there. 82 in Del Rio, 78 in Yavali, 78 in Kerrville, 83 already in 
in New Braunfels and 83 in Gonzales. Humidity is high. Dew points are in the low 70s. Now into the afternoon, these dew points will fall a little bit and get down into the 60s, but that's still enough to notice the humidity and enough to give us a heat index value. In the future cast, clearing skies with the mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. Temperatures around San Antonio will climb from the 80s into the 90s. 93 for the afternoon high temperature under mostly sunny skies. Sun will set at 834 tonight and it's going to be a pleasant evening with temperatures only in the low 80s and 70s. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I will say though that the thermometer is going to be a little deceiving because with the humidity it should feel like it's 100 degrees in San Antonio. It should feel like 101 in Hondo, 102 in Pleasanton and even hotter out toward the west. 104 feel like temperature in Del Rio. 100 in New Braunfels. So pretty nice to try to get out on the Guadalupe or the Comal rivers with feel like temperatures near 100 degrees in the weather pattern. You can see very clearly that there was a complex of storms that moved through Oklahoma City, made its way all the way to Dallas Fort Worth and is now starting to fall apart. Interestingly, this complex has developed on the east side of a heat high, which is in place over El Paso. And this is the heat high that's made things pretty quiet for us weather wise around San Antonio and of course toasty. But as it moves to the uh, west and to the north, we're going to be on the east side of that heat high and we're going to have to watch for complexes that develop in North Texas to see if they can make it to San Antonio in the week ahead. So starting uh, tomorrow night, Sunday night, lasting through Thursday, we're going to introduce only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm, but the chance for rain is going to be there. And of course, we'll keep you up to date with that as well. Keeping you up to date as well with a uh, area of uh, cloudiness and raininess over the Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche specifically. Here, there is a 40% chance the National Hurricane Center has given this uh, mess of thunderstorms of 40% percent chance to become more organized in the next five days and develop into a tropical system. Now, we really do not know where the system would go or even what kind of impacts it would have along the coast. So we're going to have to keep an eye on things and we'll continue to keep you updated. Well, you can get automatic updates through our hurricane tracker app, uh, which is a free download that we have. Hurricane season lasts all the way through the end of November, so it's really handy to have, especially as we head to the peak of hurricane season, which is in September. Now looking ahead to the rest of the weekend, a very similar day tomorrow just a couple of degrees warmer and in the week ahead it's still going to be hot temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 90s with a heat index value close to 100 but we will introduce that small chance for rain Sunday night through Thursday Sarah and Max thank you Sarah all right time now just about 9 50 82 degrees out all right we are still in the thick of the offseason but we have a lot of Cowboys and Texans news to tell you about we'll explain after the break Well, Queen Elizabeth II was back at her Windsor home at Windsor Castle to view a military parade to mark her official birthday. Now, despite the ongoing social distancing restrictions, the 94 year old monarch did not disappoint with the pomp and pageantry front. The ceremony is a gift from the Household Division of Army Regiments, which has a close affinity with the monarch. It's the end of an era for reality TV. Keeping up with the Kardashians has wrapped its final season. The series finale aired on Thursday. Love them or hate them, the series has brought in millions of viewers since it premiered on the E! Network back in 2007. Keeping up with the Kardashians spanned 20 seasons and brought on nine spinoffs. But fans don't need to fret. The stars are working on new programming for Hulu starting this fall. And Jeff Goldblum is headed back to Jurassic World. This time it will be on a much smaller screen. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a game simulation that challenges players to build new Jurassic World with new environments. Players will have their pick of the dinosaurs featured in the movies. The game launches on PC, PlayStation and Xbox later this year. Right. I don't know how we're going to fall keeping up with the Cashkins, but we're going to do our best. It is time to talk football. Anthony Brown about to start his sixth season with the Dallas Cowboys. We know defense is a big point of contention for the Cowboys, and there are no certainties about him starting this upcoming season. Now remember, Anthony Brown started eight of his ten games that he played in last season 
and a lot of uncertainty right now because the Cowboys use the draft to select three defensive backs, including Kelvin Joseph with their second pick, 44th overall, and one of their third picks. Remember, they had multiple. 99th overall, Nashawn Wright. Let's head to Houston. A lot of questions when it comes to the quarterbacks, but one of the positions that new general manager Nick Casario beefed up, running back, kept David Johnson, went out and signed Mark Ingram, Rex Burkhead, and added Philip Lindsay. That is a lot of talent. He says he is a student of Taekwondo taught by his father. I wish you could see Sarah Costa doing Taekwondo right now. Taught by his father who actually ran a class. Philip Lindsay was asked about his Taekwondo and how it helped his NFL career. Balance, you know, power, everything comes from the core anyway. And, it, and it's being able to, to have control of your body as well and just to... to you know, have that control, but the power at the same time. And also with the meditation and everything like that, it relaxes your mind and puts you in a different place where you can focus more and just just kind of block out everything else. And, you know, in this in this game, you got to be able to have focus. You want to show off your Taekwondo moves? No. Okay. <laughs> she was doing it off camera, so I figured she wanted to share. 9.55, 82 degrees out. Well, even if you're not planning to sell your home anytime soon, you should be considering the resale value on any and all renovations you've done. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about return on investment. Plus, local leaders starting to shape the next city budget. They are asking for your input, the public's input. Tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we are speaking with Laura Mays with the City of San Antonio explaining the SA Speak Up program. If you have any questions you'd like to ask about the budget or the process, submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Good morning, I'm Alicia Barrera. We're live in Austin, Texas after a man opened fire towards a crowd of people in the middle of 6th Street earlier this morning. According to Austin police, the first call for a shooting came in around 124 in the morning. Austin police, fire and EMS responded to the scene. They tell us that as of last count, 13 people are in the hospital. Some of them even had to be transported by police officers themselves. We know two victims are in critical condition. Thankfully, no fatalities to report. And it was expected that this area of 6th Street would be closed down for some hours as authorities, both local and federal, carried it out. But as of now, it's open. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Molds are moderate today in the pollen count. That's about it. Today's forecast is going to be really nice and sunny. In fact, it's sunny all the weekend long, and we'll be looking at toasty temperatures with it feeling close to 100 degrees both today and tomorrow. In the week ahead, only a small chance for rain each day. Thank you, Sarah. That's Bobby. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow.